Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's see if we can apply what we've learned so far. And of course, we're dealing here with sample variability. So let's say we have a population distribution. In the distribution, we're told that the mean of the population is equal to 100 and that the standard deviation is equal to 20. In other words, if you go from the mean plus one standard deviation, we're up at 120, and from the mean minus one standard deviation, we're down to 80. So now we're going to go ahead and take a sample. Let's say that the sample size is equal to 16. We're going to take one random sample, and the question is, was the probability that the mean or the average of the sample will fall between 90 and 110, will fall somewhere in this range right here? Now, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to graph a sample distribution, which is going to be different from the population distribution. Now, it does turn out that on average, the mean of the sample will be 100. Now, that means if we take a whole bunch of samples and we have a sample distribution, that means that the mean or the average of all those samples will be the same as the average or the mean of the population. But of course, if we take one single sample, it can be anywhere, somewhere between, well, maybe down here, all the way up to here. And so the question is, what is the probability that the average of that one sample falls between 90 and 110? Okay, so what we need to do then is we need to find the standard deviation of the sample distribution. Remember there was a relationship between the standard deviation of the population and the standard deviation of the sample means. Remember what that was? Well, it turns out that the standard deviation of the population is equal to the square root of the sample size times the standard deviation of the samples or the sample distribution, not just a single sample, but the sample distribution. So that means that the sample distribution, uh, the, the standard deviation of the sample distribution can be calculated to be the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. So in this case, that would be 20 divided by the square root of 16, which is 20 divided by four, which is equal to five. So that means one standard deviation of the sample distribution equals 5. That means that plus 10 would be two standard deviations. So this is plus two standard deviations and this is minus two standard deviations. So now what we need to do is convert that to the standard score. And of course, in this case, we can see that Z is equal to plus two on the high end and Z equals minus two on the low end. So that gives us the standard score of our sample distribution. Now we use a table to figure out what percentage of the total distribution then falls between those two limits of the mean plus two sigma plus two standard deviations and the mean minus two standard deviations. Of course I should indicate that this is the standard deviation of the sample mean distribution not the standard deviation of the population. All right of course I have my handy table ready. I look up z equals two and I get 0.477 Two five, so that means a z score, course a z score equals to two, corresponds to the number zero point four seven seven two five, which of course is forty seven point seven two five percent, which means that from the mean to plus two standard deviations represents forty seven point seven two five percent of all the probabilities, and then from the mean to the negative. 2 sigma would then also be 47.725. So we have z equals negative 2, that also corresponds to 0 0.47725, which is equal to 47.725%. So that's 47.725% for the right side, 47.725% for the left side. So when we add those two up, we get 0. Well, I can add up the percentages, that might be better to do. Let's just add up the percentages, so we get 47.725% for the right side, 47.725% for the left side. So when we add that up, we get 94, 95, 95.45%. And that is the probability that the one sample of sample size 16 will fall within the range of 90 
to 110. I'm talking about the mean of the sample or the average of the sample. And so that is how we deal with sample distributions and the probability that our one sample will fall within those limits. So we might also want to ask the question, how can we get a sample size such that we have a higher probability of the mean of the sample, the one sample that we draw, to be equal to the mean of the population. And of course that can be done by taking a larger sample size. So let's say for example that we increase the sample size where now n is equal to, and I think this pen is dying on me, yep that's a dead pen. Let me try the other red pen, see what we get here. So n is equal to, how about 64? Because then the square root of n is equal to the square root of 64, which is equal to 8. So if we divide this by 8 instead of 4, then of course what we would get, we would get 2.5 as the standard deviation of the sample distribution. And if we get a smaller standard deviation of the sample distribution, guess what happens then? Then we can say that we have a higher probability of falling within a shorter range. We have the same percent probability that we now will fall between 95 and 105 instead of 90 and 110. So that's where you can see that if you start taking larger sample sizes, the mean or the average of that one sample size would de therefore more likely, with a higher probability, fall closer to the mean or the average of the entire population. And so there you can see how that would work, and that is how it's done. What happened?